Good morning from Gateway Pentecostal Fellowship. Amen. We're mighty, mighty glad that you are joining us today. Appreciate the uh, handful of troopers in the house. Amen. We are striving to abide by the protocol, going to be cooperative in our spirits and not be a hindrance. And certainly this uh, virus that we are dealing with on a global basis is something to be respected. So we want to take measures and be responsible even as we want to proceed with ministry. Amen. Glad for these slides that are being shown on the monitor at this point. Sister Farmer and I and brother and sister Harrington uh, traveled to visit some of those and in our congregation, those that we could do so. Amen. And uh, we delivered a few groceries to some and delivered masks to everybody. Everybody got two masks each while we while we travel, <clears throat> and I'll just uh, say that's uh, brother, that's Jimmy Harlow, waving from his balcony. That's Sister Deborah Garcia in front of her door, staying, amen, happy. Sister Ruth asked, "Where's my tambourine?" Well, Sister Ruth, we asked the same thing. We want that tambourine back in here in the sanctuary, checking in on some of Gateway. So good to see Sister Dinwiddie looking and feeling good. Amen, in her door, and she does. She's coming on. Brother Stanley did a little bit of a run down the sidewalk for us. He is ready to run again in the house of the Lord. From the Dices from the bunker, greet all. Amen, hello from the bunker. It was good to visit with them. And there's Sister Ann. Amen, ready to praise the Lord. Got her hand raised. Amen, she's ready to praise the Lord. <laughs> loving life and loving God, Tina and Sand and Sazinski. It was glad to be able to stop with them a moment. By the time we got to Sister Kadeen's house and little Casey said, I miss being in church. And it was nighttime. Happy ladies on Branch, uh, Branch Street with the, Sister Debbie and Sister Abby. Amen. And there's uh, Jimmy again praising from the rooftop, rooftop. So it was delightful to actually see everybody, see these and be with them. Amen. Again, we're looking forward with the time when we can be together again here in the sanctuary to worship together, to praise the Lord together, amen, to magnify the Lord. There's nothing like the family of God, amen. So glad, so glad to be part of the church today. As our praise team comes, we're going to pray and trust the Lord for a great time in his house today. And again, his house is everywhere we are, here in the sanctuary and there in your home. Amen. Wherever we are, we are gathered together in his name. <laughs> That's taken on a whole new meaning, that verse of scripture, being gathered together in his name, because that's where we are. It's no longer a geographical address. It's in his name. Let's pray together. Lord, you are merciful and wonderful, grand and glorious. We are so very, very glad to be able to assemble one with another. Lord Jesus, under the banner of your name. For your name identifies who we are, and together that's who we are. We are your body. We are named in your family. Lord, your presence today, everywhere, not just in one address, Lord, but in all the homes where people have tuned in to watch and worship. God, you are there with them. Ignite in all of us, Lord. Amen. The fire of your Holy Ghost. Anoint in all of us, Lord. Ignite within us the fire of worship, spirit worship, that with all of our hearts we would magnify you together. We would lift your name and praise you, O Lord, with all that we are and turn you loose, turn you loose to do good things in every home, everybody, every mind, every situation, lifting our spirits today to let us know we truly are not alone. Amen. We are with you, Lord, as with one another. Thank you, Lord Jesus, merciful, mighty God, having your way in the household of faith today. Praise God. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him. Just to take him at his word. 
just to trust his cleansing blood just in simple faith to plunge me beneath the healing cleansing blood jesus jesus how i trust him how i prove him more and more my jesus jesus precious jesus oh for grace to trust him more i'm so glad i learned to trust him precious Jesus, Savior, friend, and I know that Thou art with me, will be with me to the end. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him, how I prove Him more and more, my Jesus. Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust Him more. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take Him at His word, just to rest upon His promise, just I'm glad we can trust him today. I'm glad that we know he's on our side. Thank you, Jesus, that he's working on our behalf. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God, that we can trust you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Revealed and I 
fighting for us. God is on our side. He has overcome. Yes, he has overcome. We will not be shaken. We will not be moved. Jesus, you are here. Carrying our burdens, covering our shame. He has overcome. Yes, he has overcome. We will not be shaken. We will not be moved. Jesus, you are here. I will live, I will not die. The resurrection power of Christ alive in me. And I am free in Jesus' name. I will live, I will not die. I will declare and lift you high. Christ
fighting for us, pushing back the darkness, lighting up the kingdom that cannot be shaken. In the name of Jesus, enemies defeated, and we will shout it out, shout it out. God is fighting for us, pushing back the darkness, lighting up the kingdom that cannot be shaken. In the name of Jesus, enemies defeated, and we will shout it out, shout it out. Victory is mine, victory is mine, victory today is mine. I told Satan, get behind, victory today is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I told Satan, get thee behind. Victory today is mine. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I told Satan, get thee behind. Victory today is mine. Victory today is mine. I told Satan, get thee behind. Victory today is mine. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I told Satan, get thee behind. Victory today is mine. Get behind me, devil. Peace you got nothing on me, oh, devil. Yeah, Talk yeah, to him. Hallelujah. Talk to oh, him. Yes, Put him in his place. I can have peace Amen. in this storm, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, you're a holy God, and we love you, Jesus. Oh, yeah. You are holy. You are holy. We will offer you.
God. Thank God he's a holy God. Thank God he is holy. He's separate. This world has nothing in him. This world owns nothing in our God. The Lord spoke and said, the, dead, the, the prince of this world cometh and he hath nothing in, in me. He has no part of me. The Lord stood toe to toe with Satan himself and tempted directly. But each time he responded with the good word of the Lord. Amen. Not giving one inch, not allowing the devil one ounce of his being. Our God is holy, and we praise him, and we're so thankful he is today. Untouched by this world, for if he were not holy, he would be nothing else. If he were not untouched by this world, if he could be corrupted by the ways and the things of this world, then not everything about him would become polluted. Thank God he is holy. Thank God he changes not. Thank God he is ever the same. He will never be polluted. His love will always be pure. His mercy will always endure unto the end. His grace will never stop reaching for the lost and the broken and the undone. Our God is holy, and we are glad for that today. Amen. He's still on the throne. He's still in control. He still reigns supreme, our mighty and our holy God. Our prayer answering God. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to go to him in prayer right now. Amen. And we have some specific needs. Amen. We want to pray for Dan Chase today at home with the trouble in his stomach there. Amen. We want to pray that that passes quickly. Praise God. We want to keep Brother Eli Hernandez in prayer. Good reports coming from the doctors, but he still is in great need of our prayer. I want to bring somebody else before us today, Andrew Cofield, the young minister who has become stricken with the virus. And while we're at it, just pray for all of us, amen, who have been stricken by this virus, amen. God's healing power would cover and work within his body around the world, amen for healing and deliverance. We want to pray for our civic leaders as well. Wisdom for them, guidance and instruction, that they would make good decisions, amen, in trying to cope with this situation to the very best of their ability, amen. Go to him with, to the Lord with prayer with me this morning, with us, amen, right there at home. Would you pray for these, lift these needs up in prayer, <clears throat> hallelujah. Jesus, you are great and glorious amongst us today. Everywhere we are, God, those who have tuned into this broadcast, and those who have tuned in anywhere, those who are at home praying, seeking your will, God, those who are broken and lonely in this time, who are pleading for some comfort, crying out for someone to come and help. Is there no hope for these for me, they ask? Oh, Lord God, shine light into their homes. Shine light into their cloudy skies. Let the sunlight of your love penetrate into their closed-in, darkened world, Lord. Your mercy is overwhelming. Your mercy, Lord, amen, overshadows all in this world. You are glorious and grand. There are those we don't even know about. God, we don't know their names, but you do our prayers. Send your prayer, your presence.
presence, God, your goodness to them, healing and lifting, showing them that there is another way, that there is somebody with them, that your hand is reaching out to them. Oh, oh yes. Oh, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. We pray for Dan today for quick healing, that this would continue to pass, God, quickly. For Eli Hernandez, Lord, thank you for the good reports. But don't leave him now. Don't, don't leave his side now, Lord. For Andrew Cofield, God, amen. For him individually, for healing power, resurrection power. But for those as well, Lord, that may man that we don't know their names, but they have become stricken, amen, with this disease. God, we thank you for the option and the opportunity to pray, amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. We're going to pray for Talia now. She's having an allergic reaction. We're going to anoint her with oil according to the scriptures. And we're going to pray, amen, the prayer of faith. I want you to pray with us at home now. Amen. God's power is amongst us. He is in our midst. And he's doing wonderful things right now. Come on. Come on. He's with us all. And there's healing power in Jesus' name. Si va botie babie babiki to baba baba na na si etoro. Ki la botie babie babiki to baba baba na na si kata ba eto. In the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord. Healing is here. Healing is here. Healing is here in Jesus name. Healing is with us. And this rash would continue to pass. This rash would continue to fade. Amen. This reaction would be done, would be done. I mean done. I mean done. This reaction gone. Amen. For all time. Hallelujah. God, boy, you are great. Let us believe for the wondrous. Let us believe for the miraculous. Let us believe for the supernatural. For our God is supernatural. Uh, our God is the definition of miracle. He is miracle. Uh -huh. How he loves you and me. Aren't you glad that's so? <laughs> yes, Lord. What more Thank you, mighty God. For being in your house, wherever we're located. He loves you. Oh, how he loves me. Oh, how he loves you and me. Thank God, what sweet assurance that is. Oh, how he loves us today. Amen. Words cannot describe the depth, the breadth, the height. Amen. The width of his love. It's an ocean without horizon. It's an ocean that never ends. <laughs> Deeper than we could ever fathom his love for us. The love that propelled Christ to Calvary. How can we gauge that? How can we measure that? How can we estimate that? Ain't no evaluation, no analysis that can possibly serve. His love is just too grand, too great, and he's with us today. Yes, he loves you. Oh, all we can do is ask the question, oh, how he loves you and me. Just an exclamation, no explanation, just an exclamation about the love of God. Thank the Lord, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Brother Will, if you'd come, we're going to receive our offering at this time. Praise God. Oh, the mercy of the Lord. Amen. Sister Harrington is going to read our affirmation. Upon the authority of your word, I have given and it shall be given unto me, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I am a tither. I bring my tithes today into your storehouse. Amen. Therefore, the enemy is rebuked. The curse is broken. Yes. I live under an open heaven. 
You pour out upon me such a blessing that there is not room enough to receive it. Uh -huh. We receive jobs and better jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, benefits and settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and income, rebates and returns, right. checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, bills paid off, oh, debt yeah. demolished, royalties received, my whole family saved and walking with God, Thank perfect you. health and abundance to walk Thank in divine you. favor and blessing. I am blessed going in and I am blessed going out. All that I do will prosper in Jesus' name. In Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. Praise God. Give the Lord some praise over that. Give God some worship and praise. Amen. All that is true. That all really happens. Amen. I love that affirmation. It says my entire family saved and walking with God. There are direct connections between the level to which we give and the generosity with which we give to the Lord and other blessings in our lives. The power of our prayer, amen, our devotion and consecration, amen. God loves a cheerful giver. And yes, it is connected, it's plugged into all that we are. So we give generously, cheerfully. We desire to give unto the Lord, amen. Brother Will, would you pray? Lord, we love you and we glorify you today, Lord. We ask oh, that you yeah. bless this offering, Lord. You be bless the families that give online and let it multiply, God, and bless abundantly, Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you as you give, and Brother Will bless the families who give online. Amen. There's that option on our website, gatewayupc.org. There's an option to give on that website. Feel free to to visit there and uh, and donate there. Or the U.S. mail, they're still delivering mail. Amen. <laughs> it might take longer than it ever has, but they're still delivering mail. So if you're more comfortable giving that way, why well, you can mail in your check. In fact, uh, we received uh, someone, individual's tithes yesterday by mail. So there's options there to different ways to give either online or writing out and sending in a check. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. What's happening this week? Amen. Rather brief. Amen. <laughs> we teased earlier. Really, it's more about what's not happening. Amen. As far as event. Amen. Yeah. As far as the scheduled events, you see signs everywhere. This event, that event, this meeting, that getting together is canceled. Well, in person and personal visits and gatherings are, are canceled, but we are online more than we've ever been, and uh, we're excited about that. I don't think this is going to end, being online with our services. So we are live streaming every Sunday morning. Our Wednesday evening service is, is live streamed at 7.30, and we have a, a noontime live stream called nine, Noontime Together, Monday through Friday from between noon and, and 12.30 or so, amen, no, no longer than that. Join us during the week as well, amen. We are, are trying new things and ways to reach and stay in touch with one another. I want to encourage you to share, amen, this uh, while you're live streaming, watching online. Share this with somebody else. Mm -hmm. Have what they call a watch party. Invite others to join in and watch wherever they are at, amen. And uh, be sure to comment. So uh, go online and post a comment and let us know that you're there. <clears throat> it will be good. Following the service, we'd also welcome your comments as well, how you enjoyed the service. Perhaps you have a prayer request you want to submit. Feel free to do that. Amen. Online in a comment now while we're live streaming or after, after we conclude by text if you'd like. Amen. Praise God. <clears throat> Hallelujah. God is good. Praise God. Delighted to be here in the house of the Lord. Amen. Good to have the time to worship and praise, magnify him, <coughs> and just enjoy his presence. Amen. God is good no matter what's going on around us. God is good. Amen. Praise God. I wonder if you can say that with me. God is good. Amen. Let's do that again. God is good. 
It's good to remind ourselves just to say that, verbalize, amen, the positive, because sometimes what we read and see can be oh so, so negative, amen, can be overwhelming sometimes when we see what's in the headlines, when we see and hear the news constantly talking about what's happening. This too shall pass as the numbers of of cases, coronavirus cases increases, and we read about the numbers of those being taken by this disease increases, this too shall pass, amen. And we're glad to be part of the effort to see that happen by cooperating with the, the uh, issuances from our governor, amen, gatherings uh, limited to five, amen, and keeping a social distance six feet from one another, amen. Glad to be ministering, amen, online this morning. The possibilities are just beginning to open up, amen, to us as to what this can entail. Praise God. <coughs> I'm going to share a word from the Lord with us this morning. I believe the Lord has spoken and given me something to share for us, amen. Stand with me if you would, whether you're here or at home. Go ahead, get your Bibles. I hope you got your Bibles with you. I mean, always when you go to church, have your Bible handy. Bring your Bible to church. Amen. We dress for church. We get up and set our time aside for church. And whether you're at home or you're here in the sanctuary, there's more at home than here. Amen. Why? You're in church, and we're glad to have been able to come and be in church. So if you would, open your Bibles to the Gospel of John, amen, and chapter 8, the Gospel of John and chapter 8, <clears throat> we're going to read just two verses here, we're jumping in the middle of a conversation of a, a peace by the Lord, he's speaking, John chapter 8 and verse 23, amen, John 8 and 23, and he said unto them, ye are from beneath. I am from above. Ye are of this world. I am not of this world. I said therefore unto you that ye shall die in your sins. For if you believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. Amen. Beautiful verse of scripture the Lord speaks. And we're so glad we celebrated the Lord's holiness earlier in the service. Jesus made this statement I am not of this world. He knew who his father was. In Matthew chapter 1, we read that his father was the Holy Ghost. Amen. Joseph was received the message from an angel saying that which is conceived in her, which would be Mary, amen, is of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Jesus knew who his father was. And so he said he was not of this world. He was not a product of this world or its systems, amen. He had something else throbbing, thriving within him, the very presence of the Almighty, amen, the creative power that surged upon the face of the deep in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 2, surged within the soul of our Savior, amen, surged within him as he spoke words of wonderful wisdom and touched those amongst around him that were broken and hurting, cheered them, brought them back to emotional, spiritual, and physical health. Uh, he was the almighty God with us. Amen. Let's pray together. Wherever you're at, if you'll bow your head, we'll pray together for his anointing, Lord. We thank you for your presence. Thank you for your word. God, this time together today, may your word come and register in our hearts. Touch us, O oh Lord, and help us. Be stronger to look up, Lord, to see what you'd have us see. Lord, amen. God, open the eyes of our soul that we would see beyond the immediate things and see the deeper spirit things behind. Lord, we would see what's really happening, amen, behind the scenes. We would get a sense of your working, your moving, God, your will and your dynamism happening in this world even now. For well, you are uplifting and encouraging. God, we're so glad to celebrate your presence here and everywhere. Pray for those, Lord, out and beyond these walls that 
Those who are listening, those who are just tuning in, those who are even not are yet feeling something prompting them that there's a better way to live. Amen. We love you, Lord, and give thanks to you and do everything in your blessed name, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise God. God bless you. You may be seated. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Glad to be here and with the word of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. The Lord spoke some these words, amen, and said these interesting words, for if you believe not that I am he, he knew who he was, ye shall die in your sins. It is critical that we are able to answer the Lord's question that he asked his disciples, whom say ye that I am, amen, that we're able to answer that question correctly, that he is the I am. Wonderful verse in John 8 and 58, he said, amen, before Abraham was, I am. That was not a grammatical error. Jesus was not stuttering or stumbling. He knew exactly what he said. He knew what that phrase, I am, meant. He was speaking to a people who cherished and treasured that name, that phrase, for generations upon generations, amen. When, the, when Moses... <clears throat> wanted to know his name. He said, Lord, who shall I say sent me? He said, tell them I am that I am has sent you. He gave Moses that as his name, I am. Amen. Jesus knew who he was. That's why he could say with confidence, I am not of this world. I have my roots in another place. Praise God. Praise God. What we see and what the people saw, though, that he was speaking to. Amen. In that, in that conversation, did not see who he was. Amen. Just briefly before that, he'd had a conversation with the Pharisees. Amen. He made that comment in, in uh, verse 15. He had just told them, you judge after the flesh, but I judge no man. Jesus was describing and defining the paradigm that the Pharisees and the unbelieving Jews lived in. He was defining their world view when he said, you judge after the flesh. You have no spiritual insight. You're operating in the realm of tradition, logic, amen, and human reasoning. That's what the leaders of the Jewish people were using as their guide, their instruction, amen. They were following their own ideas and ideas of teachers who had gone before, but they were failing, failing to pursue spirit guidance, spirit insight into the scriptures that they said they so treasured, amen. You judge after the flesh, you see me, he was telling them, as just another man, Amen. They failed to see who he really was. Praise God. What we see is ever so important. What we look at and see, amen, is critical to our happiness, to our fulfillment, our sense of purpose, our own very identity. What do we see? Amen. And that this morning, I really posed that question to us. Who do you see and what do you see? Amen. As you look around you, as you see the world, see its condition, as you see yourself in the mirror. Amen. Mark chapter 8, verse 24, the Lord was healing a man. Amen. He put salve and some mud on his eyes, and the man went and to wash him. Amen. And the Lord, the man came back and said, how do you see? The Lord wanted proof, this real proof of the healing power. He didn't just go on like some do and say, well, he's healed, but actually he came back. He wasn't completely healed. He said, I see men as trees. Amen. The Lord said, that won't do. So he completed the process because he wanted the man's vision to be crystal clear. He wanted to see reality. He didn't want him walking and living in a fog, in a blur, everything around him to be a blur. So how we see is of critical importance to our Lord. He wants us to see clearly. Amen. Why was it that some saw Jesus as Messiah, as Savior, as truly Emmanuel, 
as God with us. Amen. And others saw him as a liar, as a madman, a deceiver, his stories but a myth. Amen. A fable of hyperbolic exaggeration. Why is that still the case today? Why do we here in the house see Jesus as our Lord and Savior, our mighty soon-coming King? Amen. And why do others see him as just a, a liar, a myth? Why do they look upon us as deceived, naive, and foolish in our convictions? Why is it that some see the Bible as God's love letter to them, a miracle dictated by their Lord and miraculously delivered to them, this amazing treasured book, amen, by which we guide our lives, amen, while others see it as just a mere collection of myths. Others see it as simply a historical curiosity. Others see it as just an interesting piece of literature. Why is it that there is such a differing of opinions and ideas and interpretations? Some see these blessings, the blessings of our Lord's presence in our lives, the blessings of his word, the blessings of having a church family and being part of the church that Jesus gave birth to, the blessings of having the ministry active in our lives, the five-fold ministries, prophets, evangelists, teachers, pastors, and apostles, to have the five-fold ministry. Why is it some of us treasure that ministry and seek that ministry to be active in our lives and others um, just mock about it and see it as a useless money-making scheme. Such differing opinion. It said that beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Amen. That's a phrase describing why some people have different ideas about things, in fact, really about everything. Who in here has seen a painting or a printing of a painting by Picasso? Raise your hand. Amen. I studied art history when I was in college. <laughs> I never could figure out what Picasso was trying to put on the canvas. Amen. As he chopped people's vi images up into pieces to show the same face from multiple directions and fragments. Uh, it, uh, it might be something to own just because some people put such incredible value upon it. Amen. But i got to be honest with you, it would not hang in my living room, even if it was a real thing. <laughs> I'd lock it up somewhere where it would be safe and out of sight. Amen. Not pretty. But some people, amen, declare it to be an absolute thing of beauty. Amen. A wonderful perspective as they can study and be drawn into the mind of the artist um, to try to understand and receive what he was saying. Others see it as a great achievement of art, paint on canvas. Um, much what's called modern art seems to have nothing to represent. Much seems to be just streaks of paint on the canvas with no particular meaning or assignment. The artist had something going on inside of him, but I got to say, for the life of me, I don't think I could ever figure it out in some cases what it was, amen, what he was trying to say or what he was thinking at the time, amen. There's music, pieces of music, orchestra, amen. A good friend of mine, a good friend of ours, plays the classical guitar. Who has ever heard the classical guitar be played? Raise your hand if you've heard a classical guitar, amen. It takes great skill, great artistry to play a classical guitar. But uh, I think I'd much rather listen to some country western guitar. Amen. That's my personal taste. Amen. Praise God. So to diff different folks, different strokes for different folks. We see and receive things differently. Praise God. Amen. Wonder why that is. What contributes to why we see things differently, why we hear things differently, why we find different things amusing. Sometimes I see some people on the side of the road, they're laughing and having a conversation, and it's nice to see people happy. But then I wonder, what are they laughing about? What's their subject of conversation? Is it something that I would find very troubling that they find very humorous? 
Amen. Different folks for different, different strokes for different folks. Amen. In reading the book of Acts and keeping with our four weeks of fire schedule, a chapter a day, and I appreciate the reminders from Brother Harrington. I think we're on day 21, 22 today. So we're to be reading the 22nd chapter of the book of Acts today. In reading that book and a chapter the other day, I came across the reaction amen, of the Jewish leadership to the ministry of Paul and Barnabas in Antioch. And I go to Acts chapter 13 this morning. Praise God. The Jewish leaders reacted this way, Acts chapter 13, verse 45. But when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy and spake against those things which were spoken by Paul, contradicting and blaspheming. They were filled with envy, the leaders were. They saw these apostles not as men of God, not as avenues and channels of the miraculous which was happening through their ministry, but rather as a threat to their own position and influence. In verses 43 and 44 of Acts 13, we read how some others reacted to the ministry of the apostles. Now when the congregation was broken up, Many of the Jews and religious proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas, who, speaking to them, persuaded them to continue in the grace of God. And the next Sabbath day came almost a whole city together to hear the word of God. Almost the entire city, they saw what, they, what the Paul and Barnabas were doing. They heard their words of ministry and they liked what they heard, and so they almost the entire city, wouldn't there be something if almost the entire city of Cranston gathered together to hear the word of the Lord? Amen. That the miraculous was happening through the apostolic ministry of Gateway Pentecostal Fellowship. Cranston has a population of about 85,000 people. Wouldn't it be awesome? Almost all the entire city. What if 70,000 people showed up to hear the word of the Lord? How delighted we'd be if half the city, just 40,000, amen, were tuning in to our live stream this morning. Amen. And they would hear the words of God and say, I got to come and check this out. Amen. We'd have a time fitting them in this building. I don't believe we'd try. And we'd find somewhere or another to get up on the roof. Amen. Brother Will would fix us up with a speaker or two up on the roof. Amen. Fix us up so we could broadcast. So way down Park Avenue by Reservoir, they could hear on their phones and listen in. What a wonderful, wonderful event situation that would be. Almost the entire city showed up to hear the word of the Lord. But off to the side was this grumbling crowd complaining and murmuring and blaspheming, what different reactions, why such difference in their reactions. Each group saw the apostolic ministry from the vantage point of their own past experience and their own world view and their own view of themselves. They looked at the apostolic ministry and the things that were happening, the events they were seeing and hearing, came to them filtered through their paradigm, their worldview, what, they, what had been constructed in their minds because of their experience, their teachings, and their compatriots and peers. Amen. Some saw Jesus as a chance at life the way it is supposed to be, and some do today. Some saw him as healer, as liberator, as hope in the time of trouble. Others saw him as a threat to their ideas to the power they exercised over people as a threat to the kingdom that they had set up and established uh, to control others. Amen. The same was true of the ministry of the apostle, and the same is true today. Some see Jesus for what he was, the helper, the healer, the savior, the Messiah, the deliverer, our strength in time of trouble and weakness. And in this moment, of coronavirus, coronavirus crisis, Jesus is our comfort 
He is our strength. He is our peace that we sang of a while ago. He is our joy. Amen. When every condition around us would want to rob us of those treasures, peace of mind and joy of spirit, it's all with us. It's Jesus. It's Jesus is our source. Amen. As we plug into him, as we draw from him, we have peace that this world can't touch. We have joy that nobody can take from us. Amen. We have strength to go on. We have power to minister and help somebody else, amen, rather than getting tied up and fretting over our own situations. Praise God. God is so good to us today to be real in our midst and amongst us. Praise God. My mind goes back to the wonderful story of David and Goliath. How different people saw Goliath different ways. Goliath was some nine feet tall. <laughs> Surely he was a giant. I'm sure he would have been a five-star recruit, amen, upon his graduation from high school. And he probably would have been the number one draft, drafted player in the NFL draft. Nine feet tall. Why, he could walk down to the end zone. He wouldn't need any fancy moves. He could carry 12 or 13 with him. It, would, it wouldn't matter how good the tackle was. But other, and some people saw him, Saul's army, saw this giant of a man bellowing his challenge out to them. Send me a man and we'll fight. And whoever is the winner is the victor. Amen. Not just between the two of them, but army to army. Amen. Goliath uttered his challenge. I've often wondered, amen, why the, so the army of Saul cowered and retreated, amen, retracted within themselves, allowing the Philistine giant to spell out the rules of the day. Who put him in authority to, to decide how the battle was to be fought? Why didn't 30 or 40 of them take him down? It didn't matter what he said, but the fear that haunted them and how they saw this giant said, we don't have a man who can compare to him. We've got nobody to, spend, to send out there. Oh, but somebody came on the scene who had a completely different view of Goliath. Somebody came on the scene who didn't see him as the oversized threat that others did. David, the boy David, came on the scene who saw Goliath as simply an uncircumcised Philistine who had no authority. David saw him. In reality, he saw something else in Goliath. He was not the thing to be feared. He was just an imposing deception. Amen. He was an imposing lie. Amen. Promoting and bellowing out his challenge with no authority. And David, amen, knew who he was. Just like Jesus knew who he was when he said, I am not of this world. David knew who his God was. He said, you come to me with sword and shield and spear. I come to you in the name of the Lord. Amen. He knew his strength. Saul's army saw themselves as exactly that. Saul's army. David said, oh, no. My God is my ruler. He's my general. My God is my, is my commander in chief. I don't serve just Saul. I do serve Saul in a civil sense. He's my earthly king. But my allegiance, my roots are my God who cannot lose. He has never lost a battle, and he won't lose this one. Whatever test you're in, you serve a God who is an overcoming God. He's a winning God. He's going to win this one for you. Amen. Praise God. It was all in how they saw him. What they looked at, what they saw when they looked at Goliath. It really didn't matter how big he was. <laughs> the only reason Goliath had authority was because they gave it to him. The army of Saul gave it to him. And I declare to you today, the only way the devil can have his way in your life is if you give him authority. He has no authority. Go ahead and praise him. At home, praise him. Praise mighty God. Praise your God. 
praise your God because the devil has no authority over you. Amen. He wants you to think he does. He bellows out his challenge. He tells you how bad the conditions are. He tells you how bad you are. He tells you how unworthy you are. He tells you how broken you are, that you could never be healed. That's a lie. And the only way that can have influence is if you allow it. Right. Amen. We got something else to believe in. We got another message. We got a truth. We have truth to get a hold of. We got a Savior that gave his life for you. Amen. We've got a Savior, and he tells us we don't just win. We are more than conquerors. Amen. Hallelujah. We defeat one enemy in one round of battle, and we're going to come back. We're going to come back and chase him down and win him, defeat him again. We're going to chase him out of the land. Praise God. Praise God. I made you think of the 12 spies. You remember those in passing. Ten saw the, saw the, they all saw the same thing. They all went into the same land. They all saw how plentiful and good it was. They all saw the present inhabitants and as, they, as they were. They all saw the same thing. But ten of them came back with a sight that two of them didn't have. Amen. Ten of them came back. Amen. Like Saul's army said, they're too big. There's too many of them. And there's giants in the land. We can't take the land. We're not able to do it. But two of them, Joshua and Caleb, had a different chorus. They sang a different song. They said, come on, guys. We got a great God. We're able to go up and take the land. We're able to do this, not because of us, but because of him. He's the one we trust. Hallelujah. Hey, at home, worship the Lord with us. At home, praise your God. Go ahead and stir up his spirit in you and love him. He's a mighty God. You serve a mighty God. Oh, praise him. Praising him. How good it is to praise him. And how good it is when we're going to be together praising him again in this sanctuary. Amen. Praise God. Be ready for anything. When the weather warms up and we're still having to meet like this, we I might ask you to come drive to church and, and line up in the parking lot, and we'll have church outside. We'll have church in the parking lot. Amen. Let's share it with the whole neighborhood. Praise God. Amen. And anybody watching online. I wonder today, how do you view your past? The years gone by may hold memories of good times, loving times, Times of laughter, family together, mom and dad providing encouragement, strength, and giving you the very best that they had to give. Or the years going by may hold memories of struggle, abuse, abandonment, betrayal, heartrending, aloneness, and unresolved conflict and trouble. What do you see in your past? We all can go back to the events, the natural, physical events. Amen. What assignment, what meaning... What influence do we attach to them? Amen. How do they spell out our paradigm? How do they define our worldview? How does our past define our self-view? Whichever is the collection of your memories, what do you see in those experiences? I want to share with you this morning, there's victory coming out of your past. Whatever it may hold. Whether it's good memories flooded, your mind is flooded with happy times um, when you think about your past years, um, amen, or whether your mind is troubled and burdened and may even want to make you cry. I want you to know, amen, there's something lurking that's good and blessing in your past on either way because your past is not your problem. Your past is your platform for your ministry. Your past um, defines who you can, will reach in such a unique way. Your past um, is where you will go to help. Go anointed. Go anointed to your past. Go anointed and draw from your past your future in God. You don't, you're not enslaved to your past. 
You're not chained to your past. You're not locked behind bars by your past. Jesus turned you loose. He set you free. Amen. To take that, that past, amen, not wallow in it, whether it's good or bad. We can wallow in our past. Some think they're really something special because they come from a certain background, high level, high potency, high wealth, high influence background. Others think they're nobody because it comes from poverty and, and poorness and lack of achievement. Amen. It don't matter. It don't matter. We're not enslaved. We're not defined by our past. Amen. Something happened when you repented. Something wonderful happened. When you went down a watery grave in Jesus' name, when you were baptized in his name, all that was washed away, and you rose in newness of life. Hallelujah. <laughs> and then God's power came upon you. His power, amen, to rise from that event, from that experience, to rise, that newness of life, to rise in your past. That was your haunting specter, always in the lurking, in the shadows. Your past became an empowering ministry. Praise God. Ha, ha, ha. Because you're a new creature in Christ. You're not that anymore. You're a new creature in Christ. Amen. Old things are passed away. Everything has become new in Jesus Christ. Oh, ah, what a hope we have today when we are in him and trusting in him. Your past is not your problem. It's your platform for ministry. Jesus was with you through all those years. He knew what was happening. He was preparing you for a ministry. We've had some come who, who came, out of, came out of jail. Amen. Spent years in jail. One fella came. He'd spent three years in solitary confinement. <laughs> That's a bad dude. Amen. <laughs> if you're going to be locked up that long in solitary confinement. He doesn't know it, amen, but he has a ministry in that experience. He started running drugs when he was nine years old in Brooklyn, amen. He has a ministry because there are so many people that are living that nasty lifestyle he came out of. He would be able, if he would come into the household of faith, being born again and empowered by the Spirit of God, his ministry would be to go back, amen, and help those entrapped in that lifestyle and help them come to God and find the liberation that he also could find. He didn't follow through in that regard. Unfortunately, we still love him. We still want to see Nick on these chairs. We still want to love Nick and embrace him and help him. But he came. I saw him. He has a ministry. Amen. You have a ministry. Turn the tables on the liar and tell him, devil, you can lie all you want to. That's not who I am. That's my ministry. I'm empowered by the Holy Ghost, and, and I'm fixing to go and set somebody else free. Amen. Praise God. We have hope. We've got a tomorrow like never before. Others are hurting the same way you have hurt. You are uniquely outfitted to help them. Praise God. It's all in what do you see. What do you see when you look at these things? Amen. We are in the midst of a global crisis this morning, the likes of which has not been seen before. How do we see it? How do we look at this, uh, uh, this crisis? seems like it's encroaching upon us more every day. Many are becoming sick and having to receive treatment. Many have died, and more will get sick and die in the weeks to come. Yet somehow, somehow, we sense the hand of God with us in this troubled time. Amen. Somehow, we got some faith. It's in the Word of God. It's in the Word that Jesus gave us. This Bible that some call a mockery and a myth and just a book of fables, this Bible tells us something that we live by, we take, we take to heart. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Isaiah chapter 43, I read a few verses here. Amen. That has 
been quoted much in the last few days, last few weeks. Amen. Isaiah 43 and 1, but now thus saith the Lord, 